Okay, well, we will go ahead and get started. We would like to welcome the winner of the 2023 Honda Classic, Chris Kirk. Chris, congratulations on your fifth career PGA Tour win, first since 2015, is that right? That is right. Well, congratulations. It took a little bit of extra time on the job today, but you got the job done with that um, approach into 18 in the playoff was pretty much the exclamation point. With the win, you moved to number six in the FedEx Cup. Uh, I know there's a lot going in your, on in your head, but if you could just kind of sum it all up and tell us how you're feeling initially. Yeah, um, you know, d definitely still trying to wrap my head around it for sure. Um, but I'm just so I'm so thankful to – to be able to do what I do for a living. Um, I'm very thankful to have the life that I have and, and uh, to have the opportunity to compete on a stage like this and a tournament like this and, and to, to be able to pull it off is, you know, a huge bonus. <clears throat> Sorry, a huge bonus for me. And, um, yeah, just, I mean, unbelievable. Like I said, I, I don't have the words yet. You've uh, you talked a couple of different times outside, and you really credited your sobriety as the is the, the what's made just a tremendous difference. Um, if you could just touch on that, um, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, I owe I owe everything that I have in my entire life to my sobriety. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't be doing this for a living anymore. I probably wouldn't have the the family that I have currently anymore. Um, you know, I was came really close to, to losing everything that I cared about. Um, and so for that to, to have, have happened and, and worked out for me, um, obviously it was some decisions that I, that I made, but mostly the grace of God and, and a lot of other people that, that really helped me along the way. Um, but, you know, it's a, that's something that's constantly in my mind. So it's, it's pretty easy for me to see that, you know, winning, winning the Honda Classic is kind of a bonus, you know, uh, when, Literally everything, every good thing I have in my life, I owe to that. Okay. Well, with that, we'll take a few questions. We'll start right over here. Chris, congratulations. Uh, there's so many parts and perks to winning. W what's the best one? Um, I'm not going to lie to you. I've been, I came into this week at 47th in the World Golf Ranking, and that's usually not something that I care a whole lot about. Uh, but I have not played the Masters since 2000. 16 I think wow. um, and you know growing up in Georgia that you know kind of means everything to me so I've been I've been watching that world ranking closely trying to you know stay in the top 50 uh, but to to take care of it it this week is you know that's going to be something that's incredibly special you know last time I played my my son my two older sons Sawyer and Foster were I think maybe two just turned two and like four months old. Um, so now to be able to go back, they'll be 11 and nine. And then Wilder, my third son, will be five. Um, so that part three contest can't come soon enough. Uh, it's um, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that the, the whole week. Um, but just to to be able to make those memories with my, with my wife and my kids will be awesome. And, and you carry a reputation as a pretty cool level customer. What was the wave of emotions like on 18 as you, you, know, you hit the water, you hit the great shot at the end? What was that whole wave like? You know, I didn't really feel that much until, you know, after it was over. Um, obviously, I was pissed when I hit it in the water. You know, I was, I was just trying to stick with my game plan of what I was doing and, and stay aggressive and hit that right in the middle of the green and, and um, push it a little bit more, you know, if if I had really flushed that one, um, it, it still would have covered and and probably been right next to the hole. But um, you know, it was a, a a miss a miscue for sure, and one that I almost got away with and didn't. Uh, but then after after making a huge mistake like that, to to still have a chance um, and go back there in the playoff felt felt great. And so I, you know, when I missed the fairway on eighteen, I was uh, I would love to have piped one down the middle, but I almost like my chances better with a with a wedge into that pin than some of those shots from from left or long. You know, everybody saw how difficult Eric's bunker shot was, and he had a great second shot. Um, so, yeah, I liked the position I was in there, and and then um, to be able to hit that great of a wedge shot uh, under those circumstances felt amazing, and I was definitely glad that that was a six inch putt, not a four footer. 
Uh, first off, congratulations on winning tonight. Uh, that certainly means a lot to everybody. Um, how well did you know Eric Cole going into today? And just talk about the way you guys went back at each other. I think you all had like 10 holes where you had different scores. You all were just kind of going back and forth. I did not uh, know Eric at all until today. Um, he was great to play with. I was very impressed with his game. I was very impressed with his demeanor. Um, we had good conversation out there. You know, it was very, you know, as relaxed as it can be in that that scenario. But um, it was pretty cool talking to him. You know, he's being a rookie on, on the tour and his young looking as he is, I just kind of assumed he was 24 like every other rookie on tour. He's actually 34 and has um, had quite a, journey sounds like to to get to this level and and um i think we'll we'll stick for quite a while he's got a got a really great game i was i was impressed by the way he hit it he putted incredible um it was just really solid all around Tom? congratulations um <clears throat> I, I, I remember talking to you a couple of years ago here about your life's journey and you said then that y y you you've been very open about it but you weren't open you didn't think about sending a message to other people but now you're on a you have a platform you're on a stage and when you talk about it how much do you think it can help people when they hear someone like you having gone through what you went through in where you've come now yeah um i've gotten to see it firsthand thankfully it's been amazing um getting to connect with people and and meet people that have you know it's been i, I couldn't really put a number on it but it's been a lot of people that have reached out to me directly and said I I read your story or I heard your story and and that made me decide that it was time. You know, um and when I when I first came back to playing and was and was very open and honest about it, that was not in my mind at all. You know, it was more uh it was it was for me because I felt I'd lived this life for a number of years where I was just, you know, lying to myself, lying to my family, lying, you know, and hiding a lot of things and so the the honesty of of the process that I went through to get better just felt so good that I had nothing to hide and so it was just the natural thing for me to do um uh, but now on the on the back end a little bit um it's been it's been amazing you know it's not like I said not something that I really saw happening but to be able to connect with people and hear people that you know for somebody to say I got sober because of you, and my life has changed because of you. I mean, that's, I mean, you, you can't really describe how unreal that is with words. Jack? Chris, that's back-to-back uh, -back wins by uh, Georgia Bulldogs at this place for in the last 10 years. Uh, what is it about, you know, the dogs at, at this venue? Uh, I think you'll definitely see a lot of guys, you know, with the sort of grainy Bermuda greens and the wind, you'll see a lot of guys that, grew up in the south and are familiar with playing in the south um just like you see a lot of california guys win at riv you know um it's just sort of what what we're comfortable on um uh, i would say it's probably not a whole lot more than that other than that there's a lot of really good georgia players too and i know you like to <clears throat> mix up your caddies every now and then how important was michael down the stretch for you through that roller coaster over the last couple of holes yeah, Michael has, you know, Michael played golf at Georgia also, played many tours for a number of years and has caddied for me off and on for the last, I guess, almost three years now. And um, he's just really kind of gotten to the point where he, he knows me so well. He knows what I need and what I don't need. He knows when to when to say the right thing and when to just leave me alone. And, and um, he was unbelievable. Yeah, there was a, there was a number of putts on the back nine that I was really unsure of, you know, that putt on 16, I, I got down and read it, read it and I had him look at it and I was just like, I got no idea. Just tell me what to do. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he read that one perfect and made it. And, and, um, but more than, more than that, he's just a very calming influence out there for me. And, uh, you know, obviously a very, very close friend. And so we, you know, we care for each other a lot and, and really want to see each other succeed. And, and, uh, so yeah, he's, he's turned into a, a pretty darn good caddy. Jeff? Chris, you've had a nice year already um, and, and knocked on the door early in the season and with Amex and Sony. What, what do you think pushed you across the line today? Um, I think that 
I think that the situations that I was in at the Sony and the Amex, even though I did not win either of those two two tournaments, um, my mindset changed after those two weeks from maybe I can still win out here to I definitely can still win out here. I didn't know when it was going to happen or if it was going to, you know, for it to happen as soon is incredible. But the the way I played those two weeks, especially Sunday at the Amex, um, you know, coming down the stretch, I just felt great. I was I was nervous, but I felt great, and I hit so many great shots, and I hit a ton of great putts. And unfortunately, on the back nine of Amex, none of them went in. But um, you know, I felt like I executed, you know, almost flawlessly. And uh, so to do that, even though it didn't work out, it was just like you know, I know that. I know that if I if I do that again, it's going to work next time. And I'm curious. This was Eric's, uh, I think it's 15th tour start. Did you before you won the first year five out here? Did you have an experience where you had a close call and fell just short? And I'm, I wonder if you did. What'd you pull out of it? Uh, yes, I finished second at the Houston Open my rookie year, um, which was at that time in the spring. And at that time, we also the Sony was the first tournament of the year um, so that was relatively early in my tour career and um, I think I had a one shot lead after 36 holes at nine under and I shot eight under on the weekend and got waxed by Phil Mickelson who I think shot 16 under over the weekend or 14 under over the weekend something like that um, so that was a great experience for me you know being in contention and being in the lead and right around the lead um, and also got to see that like sometimes you know you can play great and, and get beat I mean that's certainly happened to me a handful of times uh, um, AT&T Pebble Beach uh, in probably 2013 or, or so comes to mind also um, I played unbelievable and finished I think three shots clear of third and uh, Brant Snedeker a good friend of mine just could not miss from 40 feet the whole week and uh you know played unbelievable and won but um yeah it's just uh you kind of got to do what you can do and and uh that the experiences of it going going both ways makes you realize like you know there's only so much i can control here you know i can't control the outcome of this term i can just control what i'm what i'm doing on each shot on each hole okay we'll finish up with craig Thanks for being open about this, but I'm just curious, is this the first time you won on tour without celebrating with a adult beverage? Uh, on the PGA Tour, yes. I, w I did win a uh, Corn Ferry Tour event a few years ago, and uh, yeah, so I was able to, but I, I think we'll probably celebrate tonight the same way. So Sepp, Sep, who won last year, is known for his uh, very high Diet Coke consumption, and uh, I'm probably pretty close to him, actually. Uh, so I remember last year we, all, we ended up back in this house together that night, and that was the first thing he did is poured a bunch of Diet Cokes in there. So what, I'll what's, probably do the same. What's it like for you to do something like that that's so different and says a lot about what you've gone through your life? Uh, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't really think about it, to be honest with you. Um, I mean, I just am I'm so excited to, to celebrate tonight with my, with my friends and, and – uh, you know, obviously wish that my, my wife and kids were down here with me, but I'll get to see them on Wednesday. They're coming down for uh, Bay Hill next week. And, and uh, so, yeah, it'll be a lot of celebrating. And, you know, I'm, uh, thank God that alcohol won't be a part of it. <laughs> All right. Well, Chris, we're proud of you. Congratulations. Thanks, Doug. You're a free man.